is Nan McKay. In today's episode, we are joined by the dynamic mother and daughter duo, Terry Sayre and Kelly Fox, who are bringing generations together with their fearless approach to life coaching. Terry, a seasoned city council member and mayor, pairs with her daughter, Kelly, a seasoned coach and busy mother of six to guide individuals from all walks of life to a fearless state of being, being through their impactful workshops and weekly podcasts. Drawing on the principles of fearless living, which were created by Rhonda Britton, Terry and Kelly are here to equip you with the tools and the skills necessary to triumph over fear and embrace life with newfound confidence and zeal. No matter your age or your stage in life, prepare to embark on a transformative journey to a more fearless you. So welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Can you share with us the Genesis story of how you both decided to work together? Because you're really bridging different generations in the process. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think when we first started, Kelly became a life coach before I did. And as her mom, I had the privilege of watching her transformation and her gaining confidence and trusting herself and really interacting with our whole family and with her children in a different way, because those are six of my grandch grandchildren, which I pay a lot of attention to. So I decided then to, <clears throat> excuse me, look into um, the program myself. And so I was coached through the program by one of her colleagues. And at that point, decided this is something I can do. And so we began doing workshops. Then I was first trained as a trainer, and then Kelly came along and assisted me, and then she became a trainer. And as we trained together, we just naturally, almost organically, saw the importance of our different perspectives. Me being, you know, in my 70s and she being in her, her early 40s and just that opportunity to bring those different generational perspectives to our work. And it changed the way that we implemented and presented the material. So that's kind of how it happened for me. So I'll let Kelly tell you about her genesis. Yeah, um, we started working together first with the podcast and we have done nine years of consistently showing up every Monday night um, and doing the podcast. We've just started our 10th season. So pretty crazy to think about that. But Terry was doing a podcast with two other coaches and they were deciding to um, come to an end with their podcast. And so she started talking to me and she's like, what do you think? Uh, you want to do a podcast? And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And um, we came up with Fearless Generation. Um, we started to, um, we decided to uh, teach the 12 steps to freedom and that's how it began. Mm -hmm. um, and we started working together and um, once a week uh, we, we did the podcast. And then as Terry was saying, we started doing workshops and, and then come COVID um, everything um, online exploded and People were willing to do virtual workshops and be in virtual uh, groups. And um, we started our coaching program, Stepping Towards Freedom, and, um, you know, just keep doing more and more. Mm -hmm. and, you both are, and, and you both are actively involved in the Fearless Living program. That's the one yes. that's created by Rhonda Britton. So yes. how has this program transformed your personal lives and what impact have you seen it have on your clients? Oh, it has completely changed my life. Um, I think that 
other than my spiritual uh, beliefs, fearless living has affected my life the most. Um, I mean, before I think about uh, who, uh, how I functioned, um, I I didn't believe uh, that I was capable of really doing anything by myself. I I completely doubted myself and every decision I made. I I didn't think very highly of myself. Uh, you know, I beat myself up all the time. Uh, and, and now it's so far from that, you know, I trust myself. I, I love myself. I can tell myself I'm beautiful, which was something I never would have done before. Um, you know, and I have the confidence to teach other people these tools, uh, to say, Hey, I'm your fear mastery coach, uh, you know, and, um, and so, yeah, my life has completely, completely changed. And I've, I've seen it in our clients as well. And uh, just the transformations that, that we see from even just uh, people who come to one workshop is, is amazing. And, and the people who um, have been in our coaching program where they work with us for a whole year, oh my gosh, the transformations that they have had have just been um mind blowing and so heartwarming that we were able to be a part of that journey with them. Yeah. Well, as, as Kelly's mom, I can attest that as I've watched her uh, grow in confidence, uh, grow in her desire to, uh, to take up space in a different way, to be a more effective mother, to have better communication skills. And like she said, to learn to love and value herself. And I think for me, that was the initial transformation was the realization that if I could learn to accept my my divinity as a child of God and I could love myself as he does, that I could unlock every bit of love that I had within me to share with others. And that was the transformational or pivotal moment in my life as I went through the fearless living training was the value that I had. I had recently lost my husband. I was uh, struggling as a, a widow. I had five children, four still at home. And it was, I wanted to change. I wanted to live my life with confidence. In my career, I was extremely confident. Um, I had taught school. I was administrator. I felt very successful in that arena of my life. Yet my personal life was not where I wanted it to be. I felt like I was not living up to what I was created to do. And so that was my transformation. It was learning to care for, value, and love myself. And when that happened, it like opened this floodgate of my capacity to serve and love others. And that's where sharing as a life coach, and I do leadership coaching with businesses as well, but my work as a life coach where I could help other women and men to see their value and teach them the skills that they can, could consistently practice that would keep them from those traps of addiction. And for me, the addiction was perfectionism. There are many addictions beyond substance addictions. And I was addicted to being perfect. That is a myth and an impossibility. And when I learned that I could do what I could, when I could, the best I could, and I didn't have that angst and that fear every time I walked out the door that I wasn't perfect, that was life-changing. And so helping others to, to recognize their value first, walk alongside of them and guide them through the maze of fear that's created. You know, we created ourselves, others created around us. Society certainly has created a lot of fear in people's lives, particularly now with uh, the polarization of our nation. And to walk beside people and say, look, you can take fear's hand and you can walk down your chosen path to life and you can live it to the fullest. Fear does not have to be in front of you, stopping you. It's there to protect you, but you can manage that. And so mastering your fear in a way that allows you to move forward, you can see how that would change people's lives. And so our clients that we work with, we, we see that. We get to be a witness to that change in their lives where they can no longer be paralyzed by fear and they can move forward in the in their journey the way they want to and we can walk beside them helping them with the tools and strategies that they can practice 
that will allow them to manage that fear and to live in, in freedom in the middle of chaos. You can be in the middle of chaos and still be living in freedom because you are walking forward, managing your fear and being able to navigate, care for yourself and move forward. So my transformation was um, revelatory in my life. It changed my life. My daughter can tell you, my other four children will tell you as well. Mom is not the same person. And I'm so grateful for that. So uh, that's my story. And then as a coach, I just, I um, am humbled and honored as I walk beside my clients and watch them experience that same kind of change in their lives. It must be extremely rewarding to see people grow. Yes. Now, Terry, you are the mayor of a city and being involved in city council and holding the position of mayor, that must come with a set of challenges. So how have the principles of fearless living helped you in your role as a public servant? Sure. I'll tell you, just, just the con the idea of running for city council froze me. Um, again, I, I'm a God girl, and I got poked by God to, to run for city council uh, to help the homeless in my community. And that's been my purpose and my focus on city council. Um, I was scared to death. I would not. I said, no way, no way. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I, I was nudged, and I followed the nudge. Uh, so I had to overcome a lot of fears just to run for the office. Uh, the first part wasn't difficult, uh, just getting my name on the ballot, uh, you know, campaigning. But when I had to walk my precinct and talk to strangers and knock on doors of all the voters in my, my uh, district, that was a, a die fear. And I learned how to overcome that one step at a time, one door at a time. And I took my campaign manager who kind of held my hand and uh and I was able to do that if I had to do that again it would no longer be such a die it would just be a risk that I would be willing to take again fortunately when I ran again no one ran against me so I'm in my second term and I am the mayor at this at this time the first full-time woman mayor in Tulare so I I re I'm very happy and proud that, uh, that a woman has taken that place in the years and years of Tulare's municipal government I'm the first woman mayor so that's kind of exciting for our gender. And uh, just again, to show people that at any age, I ran for council at 74. I am now 78 as the mayor. I still feel 50. Uh, there's no, you know, I, I think age is a state of mind. But the fearless living concepts of navigating my fear, of knowing clearly what I wanted to do. So being able to also manage that landscape with clarity, which is another thing we coach people to, to accomplish is what do you want? Do you clearly know your focus? Now, here are the steps for you to get out of your comfort zone and navigate that fear one step at a time, collaborating with your coach and your colleagues and moving forward. So it's, it's definitely helped me. I've brought that, that uh, I, I guess, culture of change and fearless living to the dais I share it with my colleagues, uh, with all the city staff. I show them that uh, the importance of serving with a heart of a servant, not with the heart of a person trying to uh, grandize themselves or move into another, um, you know, position. But truly, it's a it's a it's an act of service in our community. You're not paid. It is a voluntary job. You still run, you know, but you're not you're not on a salary like in very large communities. I'm in a 70,000 70, population community. It's not small, but it's not large municipality at, at all. So it's uh, we get we get a stipend to do things within our city uh, and we get uh, they'll pay for us to attend events so that we can be a present and, and do that. But I get paid five dollars a session uh, to run city council meetings. And they take taxes out of that. So you can see it's not it's not a lucrative position at all. It's one that fit me as a servant with a servant heart. And as I said, I focus on the homeless and we've made wonderful advancements with managing both their safety and the safety of the constituents of our city. So sort of in our county, we're, we're the model city for how we're do, handling and managing uh, the homeless population, which I know in many areas, it's, it's the number one issue. And uh, so 
yeah, all of that. I, I would not have had the um, courage or maybe even the dedication if I hadn't learned how, um, how valuable one person can be and how one person can make a difference because they, they understand themselves. And from that, they understand others and they can reach out to others because they have the confidence that each of them, each of us has so much value. What have you done to manage the homeless population? I'd be curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. So what you can go on for a while. So be careful. <laughs> try to be succinct about it. Okay. But we, in our community, we have, uh, a, a railroad that runs right down the center of our community, like many uh, rural communities in California. That's how they started was they were a stop on the railroad. Uh, they were all congregated on the railroad. Well, within one year, we had 13 homeless individuals die, either hit by a train, jumped in front of a train or were pushed in front of a train. So we worked with a railroad to help us. Uh, we purchased a property where we could we could have a, an, a temporary encampment where they could be safe and have water and toilets and showers and food and electricity, to, not in their, their tents, but a space they could charge their phones and they could, you know, have those uh, things accessible to them. It was voluntary for them to be moved there. I mean, to choose to go there. But the railroad helped us by its private property by saying they could not be on the railroad. So this gave them well, where am I going to go? Well, I think I'll go to the encampment. So we have 200 individuals in the encampment. It's monitored by our police department. We have a 24-7, uh, uh, you know, monitoring there. And they're provided many things. Now, I'd like to say it's all peachy, you know, keen over there. There's still issues every day. We deal with issues because we're dealing with individuals who suffer from mental illness, from addiction, from severe depression, you know, from all kinds of, I mean, can you imagine living on the street? And many of these people have lived on the street for 10 years. Um, what, what would, what would you do? I mean, again, I try to put myself in their place. So we're in the process of building a permanent shelter where all of these people, uh, we provide, um, case managers. We've housed over 30 of them since they've been there. So the, the, the goal is to them housed. But there's a transitional period where they have to learn how to be housed. They haven't been housed for so long, so they're in survival mode. So we'll we'll be do, moving them into a permanent shelter, which will have phases again to get them bridged into housing. So our goal is to get every homeless individual that wants to be housed and to get document documentation and work and move back into society. And we've been successful even in this temporary encampment with over 30 people. So then we could 30 more people can choose to come into the encampment because it is, there's only so many spaces. So that's what we're doing. And we're providing um, drug, drug addiction training, mental health services, uh, case workers, family therapists. We're providing all of that because without that, you know, again, how are you going to change if you don't get the tools? And do you have a housing authority local where uh, you are working with them on the voucher program? Yes, yes, we do. So many of them are able to get get vouchers in order to go into housing. Other are private, uh, you know, landlords. Mm -hmm. We also have a very active um, uh, homeless task force that works with multiple agencies. Self help. I don't know if you're familiar with self help and HR communities. They are building and renovating. Um, motels uh, to, and renovating those so people can go into those as well under other other than the uh, voucher eight program under other programs through the through the uh, housing department and the task force so we have the potential in the next year to house as almost as many as we as want to at least out of our community i mean other communities may have more which also have their programs but it's really working well and um i've gotten to know so many of these people personally and just they're so anxious to to uh, improve their situations. Well, that sounds fascinating, and of course, housing is my background, so that's is. that is interesting. Yeah. Kelly, um, let's talk about you a little bit. Managing, a, let's say, a bustling—that's <laughs> probably a good word for it. Household with six kids, while being a coach seems like a, a really hefty task. 
So how do you integrate the teachings of your fearless living into that parenting style? Yeah, with the older ones, it can be a little bit of a challenge because they recognize the language and they're like, don't coach me, mom. <laughs> um, you know, like you can hear something from someone else and you're like, oh, that's smart. But you hear it from your mom and you're like, no, I don't like that. <laughs> right. So, mm, um, so it's definitely comes into play with how I communicate with them um, and how we interact with each other. Um, but I think the the thing that really supports me the most as a mom is doing my work um, because the, the better I am, the better I can be there for them and uh, show up there for them. Because if I'm not doing my own work, then I'm coming to them you know, not full, you know, like not being able to have patience or not being able to really devote any kind of energy to them because I'm, I'm empty. So uh, doing my own work um, really helps um, as well as um, my husband is uh, very familiar with uh, uh, the fearless living uh tools and he's been coached himself not by me but he has been coached himself and so knows the language and uh our relationship really affects our family as well and so we're very dedicated to having good communication skills as well um because it takes both of us to um to raise our family and to create um the environment we have in our home um but uh you know, I really haven't had a full coaching practice, um, except for maybe the last uh, six or five years, uh, because I was raising babies. Uh, now, my youngest is in first grade, he's at school um, for the majority of the day, and I have a lot more time that I can devote to uh, doing coaching and managing all of the the things that it takes to have a business and be visible and um you know try to uh affect change in the world and so it's a little bit easier now the older ones help with the younger ones um but yeah it it's uh there's always that balance of work and family right uh for anyone um whether they work in the home or out of the home and so uh it's it's uh it's it takes a a realignment sometimes of the priorities um sometimes um you know it's like okay i'm going to step away from my computer and spend some time with my kids um and uh and not let the the work over overwhelm the the other opportunities that I have to you know be fearless and to interact with teenagers takes some courage and um it definitely it definitely does for me <laughs> what's the age range it's six to what to Wani. my oldest is 20 um and he's still home so they're all still home uh and yeah my youngest is six so can either one of you, could be either or both, uh, walk us through these 12 steps to freedom that you share in your weekly podcast, or is that too long? And no. then <laughs> she'll, she'll do it more quickly than I would. <laughs> and then work in, if you can, how can a person implement these steps in their daily life? Yeah. Well, um, I would suggest listening to our podcast each week, um, but the the 12 steps, the first step is awareness. It's actually this month um, that we're doing awareness. And so uh, if you follow us on our social media, we, we post daily several things that you can um, be inspired by uh, to up your awareness. And we do that each month. So um, it's it's the easiest way, I think, to integrate these tools. But just um, being aware of what they are is the first step, right? So the first step is awareness, then it's willingness, um, because you can be aware of change, but if you're not willing to do anything about it, it's not happening. Um, the second, The third tool is connection, and that's connection with yourself 
first and then with others. Uh, the next is compassion. Uh, we we um, have compassion for ourselves. It always starts with us. Um, and then when we can be compassionate with ourselves, it's much easier for us to be compassionate with others. Um, accountable is the next step. Uh, and then uh, that's pretty explain, <laughs> you know, easy to understand being accountable. Um, and then it's being in the present moment. Uh, that is where change happens. It happens in the present moment, not in the past, not in the future. It happens right now and what you decide to do right now. Uh, the next is surrender. Um, we have all our challenges with wanting to be in control. Um, and yet we cannot control others. <laughs> and there is a lot we can't control. But there are things we can and we can be responsible or accountable for those. But um, yeah, surrendering those things we can't control. Let it go. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> um, and then it is intention. So being intentional um, and um, on purpose with the things that we are choosing to do and be aware of. Um, and then it is possibilities, um, which is my favorite one. Actually, I switched those. But anyways, um, possibilities is step eight. And um, we, uh, you know, just being open and aware to all the different possibilities in front of us and uh, having the courage to step out and take them. Um, trust is step 10. And uh, it's my favorite one because trust you is already the thing. said the other one was your favorite. No. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, trust is something I practice every day, trusting myself. Um, and then uh, passion, having a passion for your life, a passion uh, for uh, your purpose um, and your mission here on earth. And then love is step 12. Um, mm -hmm. So having love for yourself, a love of your life, a love of others, um, a love for being in freedom. Uh, and so those are the 12 steps. And they, the amazing part of them is they were created to work in synergy. And so as you take one step, the next step just builds upon the first one. So really awareness, willingness, and that goes through the entire 12 steps. So you're just building upon your capacity to manage your, your journey. And we also, I do a little thing called Terry Talks every weekday. And that's just a one minute um inspirational thought, a uh, tool, a uh, strategy around the same step of the month. So you get, and that is on YouTube and you can have it emailed to your email. It's very accessible. And that's just a, a shot in the arm every day to keep yourself thinking and speaking and acting in accordance with that step. And so as you progress from step to step, it just grows your ability to be aware is heightened as you talk, think about being willing and accountable, as you think about being seeing possibilities, as you think about being in the present moment, you're aware, you're willing to uh, be observant, to listen, to use communication skills effectively so that you can then incorporate, actually internalize each of those steps. So they become a part of your processing. Each of us processes in a different way, yet each of us can benefit from being aware, but how you process that may be differently, but it is something that then grows into a lifestyle. It grows into the way you take up space. It grows into your, your thinking and decision-making processes so that these 12 steps can be such so internalized that they do transform and affect the way that you process information. So they grow up on each other. And each year that we go through them again, I grow in every area. They, they become more rigorous, more automatic, uh, and more intentional. Yeah. So they're yeah. just, they're very purposeful and intentional in how you can live your life on a daily decision by decision, choice by choice method. Yeah. And we share tools on the podcast and on our social media all the time. And, um, those tools, we teach you how to integrate them as well. Well, how you do, you're doing a lot of different things. So let's take them one by one and see how people could reach you for your, 
for things like you've got your podcast. So would you give the name of it? And uh-huh. our podcast is Fearless Generations. Mm. Okay. And then mm. the second one is you have the YouTube channel, Terry. For yes. You. What's the yes. Name? Terry talks. Terry talks. That's what, that's not the name of your channel. That's oh, what, I'm sorry. that's what the videos are called. Her channel, her channel is Terry A. Sarah coaching. Um, and, but they can find, they can get access to all of this on our website, which is fearlessgenerations.org. So um, they can find us on all social media as Fearless Generations with an S on the end, generations. Uh, and um, yeah, we're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Facebook, um, and YouTube. And so we have a Fearless Generation YouTube page as well. Um, and, uh, but Terry Talks is on Terry's YouTube channel. Okay. And you also have a group and how can they sign up for that on your website as well? Um, I think, I think you get, you can, uh, there's a link to our Facebook group on there, but, um, if it, our Facebook group is called get fearless at any age with fearless generations. But if you, uh, look up fearless generations, it'll come up. Mm -mm. Is that where they sign up for the program, Kelly? Uh, no, the program would be through the website. Okay, so they should really go to your website first. Yeah. And then sign up. Well, you yeah. two are doing some tremendous things and making such a difference in the world. It's just fabulous. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Well, we appreciate you so much. We had the pleasure of meeting Nan uh, in California, she came out for a workshop as a ma for master speaking skills and with Katarina Rando, which I don't know if you've had Katarina on your podcast, but I would assume you have. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we met each other there and it was an instant uh, connection and uh, her, her work, uh, she and I are, are very close to the same age and both of us think there's no, no age limit on growth, no age limit on service no age limit on learning. And so right away we connected because, uh, you know, that's an excuse people use uh, to sit back on their laurels. And I just feel like the world is full of opportunities to learn. And that's what I love that Kelly and I can work together, but we have different experiences and, uh, you know, can offer different perspectives because I've been able to learn more because I've been here longer. <laughs> so it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we're, we're very different coaches. Um, we coach because we have different personalities. We've had different life experiences. And so when you come to one of our workshops or participate in a um, in our group program or you listen to the podcast, you'll see that you're getting more than just one uh, perception or one um, opinion or one set of experiences you're getting two, and um, you know two coaches, two uh, you know advanced, certified, fearless living coaches dedicated for you to you uh, to support you with the change that you want to um, happen in your life. And uh, we say we bridge you from where you are to where you want to be. And um, we really, we are passionate about that. Well, thank you so much for sharing with our audience and with everyone that touches you, because I think you have a great thing going to help a lot of people. Thank you, Nan. Thank you. Thank you.